and it's their intrinsic and they nature. Sound, you know, it's cool, basically. Sound, cool, sound. Religion. So you can look at it and say, yeah, these people have nothing to do with the true Islam, with the true religion, but you cannot deny where it came from and who brought it about. And you can go into the Quran, you can go into the Hadiths, you can read what it's saying, but <clears throat> excuse me, you cannot prove it. You can't prove it. None of it is based upon proven facts or proven history. Which is why, just like the Bible, it requires faith. So it's not like this history is not there, that it can't be proven. You have this long war that ends in basically a truce almost. Status quo antebellum. Basically, each party saying we're going to go back to the way things was. Then, consequently, after that, you get Islam. That's using the same prophets as Rome, who they just was in a war with. I mean, it's not a coincidence. You got to really think about that. This is a proven, uh, uh, proven fact. This is proven history that we can go back, that we can look to, that Rome admits to, that history admits to, and it's there. It's proven. So we can call it all a coincidence and just say that um, it's just coincidence. You know, this shit just happened. But when you look at everything else that goes with it, everything that follows it, I mean, it fits too perfectly with this whole thing being a setup. And as we go along, you'll see, you know, even more clearly that that's exactly what it is. Okay, so now let's start getting into the really good stuff, the good information. Now, as I said, I have a video that I did on Islam before. It's called The Ignorance of the Black Muslim. You should check that video out if you didn't see it. And it really gets into more the, you know, a lot of stuff that you should know about Islam. But like I said, after this video, this video should be enough for you to be like, oh, hell no. And um, I think that the first video is a good, it's a good video for people who like to do research for any Muslims who may be doing research, which is against your religion. But still, as I said, if you are here, you are here because you are looking for validation or you feel like you're being duped and something is wrong and this religion is not what you thought it was. But you should definitely watch that video. Do that research. Don't follow me. As I say, don't listen to me. Don't listen to nobody. There's nothing better than doing your own research and figuring this stuff out for yourself. I'm here to simply give you my research and what I have found and where I know, you know, your path is going to lead if you are real with yourself. I don't understand how so many people keep saying that, you know, I do research, I study, I read, I read. Then if you actually do these things, there's no way that you don't come to the same conclusion as me and many other scholars who actually, you know, do the research and read, who learn Arabic and learn how to read, read certain uh, passages and words. You, I mean, if you go and research something, you got to really get into it. You can't be biased as far as the information. You know, if you're researching to fit the religion because you want to be in it, then you're being biased. You're cheating yourself because you're only looking for information to support the religion. If that's the case and you want support for the religion, just be in the religion. Don't go look for nothing. Just be you know, true to your faith. Stick with it. You're trying to go out and do research to find stuff to support your religion because you want to stay in it. Just stay in it. But if you be true and real to yourself and you go out and you look for the right information, the critical information, the information that makes sense, then you're going to come to the same conclusion as me. You're going to find out everything and it's going to turn Islam upside down for you. But I mean, if you haven't been watching the news and paying attention to history over the last 16 years, then, you know, you can see clearly what's going on with Islam. But, you know, I want to get into a man named Albert Pike, who most of you know by now who, who do research but before i get into albert pike i want to go back a little bit further and uh get into um well not too far further i want to get into the whole lincoln assassination and i know you're going to say what the hell does this have to do with islam but trust me bear with me for a second i'm going to you know how i do if you watch my videos i'm going to stray away 
for a little bit and I'm going to get into this whole thing and it's going to make sense because it all fits and it's all going to come back and when it's done you'll, it'll make sense but I'm going to go away from this Islam thing for a little bit and get into this whole uh, Masonic Albert Pike Lincoln assassination stuff that's going to bring everything together and it's going to make a lot of sense. So now, as I said, before I get into Albert Pike, I want to uh, get into the whole Lincoln assassination a little bit. Now, we know John Wilkes Booth. John Wilkes Booth was a member of the Knights of the Golden Circle, just like Albert Pike. And also like Albert Pike, he was a Scottish Rite Freemason. Now, anybody who studies the Lincoln assassination knows that almost everybody in the Lincoln administration wanted Lincoln dead. They wanted him gone. And a lot of them was complicit in his assassination and helped with the cover-up. Now, General uh, Lafayette Baker, he was basically summoned to uh, Washington to help out with the whole Lincoln assassination, the case. And within like two days of him being there, he already arrested four people and had a lead on Wilkes Booth and uh, his accomplice. Now, remember, they had supposedly tracked down uh, Wilkes Booth and his accomplice uh, David Harold to a barn and Harold basically surrendered and they took him away but Wilkes Booth put up a fight supposedly didn't want to go quietly and he was shot and killed by Sergeant Thomas uh, Corbett uh, nicknamed Boston Corbett and we know they took uh, Harold away and he was later hanged along with three other accomplices for being complicit in the assassination of Lincoln these are actual pictures from the hanging by the way now, we know that uh, General Baker made sure it was a military tribunal so he could control exactly how the trial went and what questions and everything would be answered because if they had a regular uh, uh, trial, like a regular civilian trial, because these dudes was tried as, you know, uh, military people. Some of them was in the military. So he wanted to make sure they had a military tribunal so he couldn't control it. So everybody else who was in on the whole thing, you know, it wouldn't come out in trial. But, you know, they was assassinated. They was, you know, all hanged and killed. And uh, uh, General Baker basically received a large part of that $100,000 reward for capturing, you know, those people. Now, understand, Wilkes Booth's body was never photographed. Nobody took any pictures. Remember, they took pictures of the men who was hanged, who was supposed to be accomplices or, you know, complicit in the assassination of Lincoln. They took pictures of those bodies, but there's no picture of Wilkes Booth's body. Now, the Secretary of War, the War Secretary, Edward Stanton, he, who a lot of people believe was also complicit in Lincoln's assassination, he hid the keys to where uh, Booth's body was supposedly stored. He didn't allow anybody access to it. And he also had 18 pages of Wilkes Booth's diary. Now remember, his diary was supposed to be coded, but he had in there that the nation was controlled by a group of Scottish Rite Freemasons who worked for the British Crown. Now, the weird thing is, later they also found a diary of General Lafayette Baker, the same dude who supposedly court booth and had the foreman hang. They found his diary. It's also, it also was coded, but it also said the same thing, that the nation is controlled by a group of Scottish Rite Freemasons, and they work for the British Crown. And his diary was actually written inside of a British military journal. So now, many believe that Albert Pike was also, you know, a part of the whole Lincoln assassination. After the Civil War, he was charged with treason. He was charged with treason for uh, getting the Indians to attack the North, to attack Union soldiers. Now, remember, uh, Albert Pike was a Confederate general. Now, a lot of people don't know he was also a lawyer. He actually helped a lot of Indians get back their land or beat a lot of cases that was going against them, you know, from the North. Remember, the North was always trying to take Indian land, and he helped them out with a lot of cases. Now, he basically fled to, to uh, Canada when he was charged with treason until uh, Andrew Johnson became president. One of the first things that Andrew Johnson did when he became president was to give Albert Pike a pardon for his war crimes. He pardoned him. Gave him a full pardon. So now, what does this have to do with Islam? Of course, as I said, we're going to get into that. It's all going to make sense. So now let's look at it. We have Wilkes Booth, 
who was a Scottish Rite Freemason, who put in his diary that America, the nation, was being controlled by Scottish Rite Freemasons who worked for the British Crown. We have General Lafayette Baker saying exactly the same thing in his diary that just so happens to be in a British uh, military journal. We also have Albert Pike, who was a Confederate general and co-founder, chief judicial officer and imperial wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. He co-founded the KKK. He was also a 33rd degree Scottish Rite sovereign grand commander of Freemasonry and considered the highest ranking Freemason of all time. Pike died in 1891. He was buried in Oak Hill Cemetery in Washington, D.C. until 1911 when the House of the Temple was built in Washington and he moved his crypt there. Now, the House of the Temple has a huge atrium to the Supreme Council of 33rd Degrees. To the right of the atrium is a staircase where you can see a statue of Albert Pike. Those stairs lead up to the temple for the 33rd degree Freemasons. Underneath those stairs is supposed to be the crypt of Albert Pike. Now, to the left of the atrium is a memorial dedicated to Albert Pike. Now, the house of the temple is the headquarters for Scottish Rite Freemasonry. Let me say that again. The House of the Temple is the headquarters for Scottish Rite Freemasonry. It is exactly 13 blocks due north of the White House, and it would be the capstone on the pyramid of the Masonic layout of Washington, D.C. So now, you know, what does that tell you? Do you understand what's going on? Do you, do you see what's going on? Now, forget what Booth said about Scottish Rite Freemasonry's running America. The same thing that Baker said, Lafayette Baker wrote, Scottish Rite Freemasons running America. It's right there in front of you. All of the mystery, all of the people talking all this supposedly conspiracy theories about you know the Illuminati, Freemasonry, them running everything, and it's right in front of your face. There it is, plain as day. You have a whole temple I mean, first of all, just get it out your head that th this is not going on. This is happening. We, we play with this stuff and we speculate that, well, maybe the Masons run stuff or maybe they don't. It's here. What do you think all this stuff is about? The whole Masonic layout? You think they did that because they in some kind of, you know, club? People is so passive and we seeing stuff that's right in front of our face and it's telling us exactly what's going on and what these people are about and everybody just want to ignore it. How can you go and lobby and complain and, you know, protest about anything in Washington when you see that whole Masonic layout and everything that's supposed to come with that? How can they, and you need to understand a lot of your senators, a lot of your congressmen, a lot of your council members, a lot of these people are members of this whole Scottish Rite uh, Freemasonry. And you can go down there and you sit out there and wait and you see who comes out of there and it's going to surprise you. But understand how. Can you have the tomb, the crypt of a man who was a Confederate general, who also was accused, he was never tried, but he was, he was accused and suspected of being involved in the assassination of an American president. How can you have that right there in Washington? I mean, what is that place? What is it? Like we speculate and we play with this stuff, but when it's right in front of your face, everybody wanna just ignore it like it don't exist. People look at that Masonic layout of Washington and they just ignore it. And, you know, everybody running around talking about election and this and that. I mean, this stuff has been here for centuries. And nobody wants to take it seriously after everything that's going on, after all the information that's put out, after, the, after America has basically been taken over by this whole banking system. And we look at this stuff and nobody wants to accept it when it's right there. Now, I remember the first time I went to visit the White House. I remember the first time I ever went there, there was this dude out there who was talking about the Masonic layout of Washington. This dude was handing out like pamphlets and stuff, talking about masonry and talking about, you know, the Masonic layout and the presidents and all this stuff. And everybody was just like looking at this dude like he was crazy. I mean, you know how people be when you see somebody acting funny. A lot of people just walk past them and kind of ignore them. I was standing there listening to the boy. Everything he was saying, it's a white dude too. Everything he was saying on point. He was making 100% sense. 
And I was like, damn, he killing it. I was shocked they was letting him stand up, stand out there and spit that stuff. But, you know, nobody was listening to him. He wasn't really drawing no crowd. He had these big signs and stuff. And, you know, he was like into it and he was like sweating. I, like, I never forget that. He was really like trying to get the information out. And the thing is, it seems like that, you know, we are sitting back waiting for it to happen. You know, waiting for the end to come, waiting for them to do whatever it is they're going to do. You know, we know that this government is crooked. A lot of people know that they're trying to, you know, reach their agenda, new world order and this and that. But it seems like the people is just waiting for it to happen. You know, I guess people feel like if it ever comes down to it, you know, if it ever go down, that we can beat them. The people, you know, it's more than us, more of us than them. And that, you know, if they ever try something, we'll all come together at that moment. And we'll just, you know, win, you know, victory. They won't be able to, to defeat the people. But you got to understand whenever that day comes, if it comes, whenever it happens, whatever they do, they will win. They're going to win, period, point blank. And they're not even going to try anything. They're not even going to do anything that major unless they knew 100 percent that it's going to lead to victory. And while we sitting back not doing nothing, they are doing everything in their power for that outcome, to get to that goal, to reach that agenda, to win. And we are doing nothing to stop them at all. We are doing absolutely nothing. And I'm saying all this because there is a Masonic headquarters, a Freemasonry, Scottish Rite Freemasonry, that is represented as a capstone for this whole government, for this whole organization, represented as the capstone on this pyramid for our government. And when you look on the back of a dollar, you have the pyramid with the capstone, the all-seeing eye. Around that pyramid spells out Anduit Coeptus, Noro Ordo Seclorum, and when you put a star over it, it spells out Mason. Now, the whole thing means favor our undertaking new order of the age. What is all that? What? I mean, what, what is it? What's going on? Like, and we see this shit every fucking day and nobody wants to just, you know, I know. I mean, what can you do? You just one person. What can you do? I know that's how a lot of people feel. What can I do? And that's how they want us to feel. But it's amazing to me that as us as a whole, as a collective, they didn't stump this out yet. And it's because we are racially divided and we are religiously divided and they are conquering us because they are the one who has divided us. And it's crazy when you get into it. And one of the things I'm into deeply is the whole American history, American politics and all that. But that right there is so much more deeper than that. But I want to try to stick on this whole Islam thing because that's the topic. But it's a lot deeper. And if you've seen some of my videos, I kind of get into it more. Okay, so it's a Masonic Lodge, 13 blocks from the White House, symbolizing a capstone on the pyramid of the Masonic layout of Washington with the crypt of Albert Pike, a very high-ranking Freemason, Scottish Rite Freemason, and Grand Wizard of the KKK, co-founder of the KKK, and also a Confederate general who used the Indians to attack Union soldiers. I mean, it just don't get no, you know, no weirder than having this dude here and having it being attached to Freemasonry and Masonry and having Mason on our dollar coated with the pyramid and capstone. You know, it's, it's weird. This dude wrote a book called Morals and Dogma, where he's basically saying that Lucifer is the light bearer and the light of Freemasonry that all Masons, you know, ascribe to. 